In this Excel video, I'm going to show you how to use the Excel subtotal function, and I'll compare and contrast it to the sum function. So here I have an employee list, and you can see there's different departments that the employees are part of, and we have their hourly wages, hours worked, and income. I would like to add up the hours worked. And normally I might do that at the bottom of the data or to the side, but just so that you can see it better in the spreadsheet, I've put it up here at the top. So how would we normally do this? Normally we would use the sum function. So I could click here in cell E2, for example, and many people are used to using the auto sum function when you want to sum, and that's fine. In this case, it'll be a little tricky because this cell is above the numbers that need to be summed. So I'm just gonna type in equals sum, left parenthesis, and then I'll select the range that I want to sum up. And instead of just clicking and dragging, I'm just gonna type in the cell references. So E4 colon, which represents the word through. So E4 through, let's say E400. I should put in my right parenthesis and then I'll tap enter on the keyboard and it's added up all of the hours worked for all of the employees in this list. Now let's do the same thing, but using the subtotal function. I click on cell E1, type equals subtotal, left parenthesis, and look, I get a whole menu of different types of subtotals that I could generate. One of them though is sum. The code for sum is the number nine. So I could just type the number nine here, or I could double click on sum and it puts the number nine in for me. Next, I'll put in a comma. And next, Excel is looking for a cell reference. So it's the same as with my sum function. So I'll just type in E4 through E400. I should put in my right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and I get the exact same result. So you may be asking yourself, why would you ever use subtotal when the word sum is shorter than subtotal? Why not just use sum? Let's take a look at why. In addition to the fact that the subtotal function lets you choose from a list of different types of subtotals, average, sum, max, min, etc. In addition to that, the subtotal function allows you to calculate only the items that are currently visible, that are not filtered out. So as you can see, I have my data in a table here, and there are some filters ready to be applied. If you haven't already watched my videos on filters and filtering in Excel, you really need to do that. But basically, I can use these filters to focus in on exactly the data I'm looking for. In this case, I want to know the total amount of hours worked by the sales department. So I just click this button here, and I'm going to deselect all, and then I'll just select sales. Click OK, and now I'm only seeing those employees that are in the sales department. Now look at my sum. The sum is still exactly the same as it was before. Excel is still counting the records that are not visible. If you look over here, we only see row eight and row 12. It seems to be skipping rows nine through 11, and yet Excel is still calculating it here with the sum function. What about subtotal? No, the subtotal function is only adding up the hours worked for those employees that are currently visible. In other words, the sales department. So this is working great. I'm gonna click the filter button again, and this time I'll deselect sales I want to know how many hours were worked by the inventory department. I click OK, and the subtotal is updated here. Now I can switch and go to administration. Let's take a look at that, and you can see the total hours there. So as you can see, in some cases, that subtotal function is what you want to use instead of the sum function or the average function or max or min. There are times when you'll want to use the subtotal function and then specify the kind of subtotal you want. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider clicking the thanks button below the video, or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I have to give a quick shout out to my $5 Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for all you do to support the channel. Some of you have been with me for a year and a half, two years, or longer, and some are brand new. But regardless, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for supporting the work that I'm doing.